King Kong is roaring back into theaters, but should you go bananas for Kong Skull <laughs> Island? We'll tell you right now on Screen Junkies News. Hi, I'm Dan Merle. And I'm Roth Cornette, and that was awesome pun business. Thank you. I take pride in my puns. We are here with your non-spoiler review for Kong Skull Island. Roth will be providing a spoiler review closer to the weekend when people have actually seen the movie. But for right now, let's get deep dive, a deep dive into Kong Skull Island. What did you think of this movie? So I think that this actually falls in line with a lot of monster movies, right? Which is that the monster stuff is great and the human stuff is very uneven. And that is exactly right in some way if you're actually emulating a traditional B-monster movie mm -hmm. from the 50s. And the most important character in Godzilla is Godzilla. You have to get that character right. The most important character in Kong is Kong, and this is a great Kong. We'll talk about some of the issues with the human storylines, yeah. but I think that they nailed Kong in this movie. Yeah, the words that kept going through my head during this movie were uh, creature feature. Mm -hmm. And that's definitely what this movie is and it's not just Kong it's you know it's a little bit of what Peter Jackson explored when he remade the movie back in 2005 before they left Skull Island yeah. as far as like it's not just King Kong on this island there's so many different kinds of creatures and that's that's the movie strength is yes. the creatures that they come up with are really cool and kind of menacing terrifying they jump out at you when you're not expecting them to and then the Kong fights are great yeah they're really good it, you know it's it, it this movie reminded me a lot I, I liked this movie in the same way that I like Pacific Rim which is that uh, the monster stuff was great and the human stuff was just good enough for me to not jump off board with the movie. I, I will say this, it's this is a Kong that is a little dissimilar to, to some of the previous iterations, but I still really like it. And there's subtle changes that I think um, actually work to the movie's benefit. Without spoiling anything, as we know, traditionally Kong falls a little bit in love with the leading lady, traditionally, yeah. right? Which, biologically speaking, never really makes a lot of sense. You know, like not only is it unnerving, but why would why would a, why would a huge ape fall in love with uh, a, 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 tiny, human, a tiny human tiny woman? little yes. human woman? So in this version, there is certainly a dynamic in play, but you don't so much feel as if it's romantic love so much as um, a pet. <laughs> right, a protector. A protector, uh, Exactly, yeah. something to take care of. Well, she's his pet, or he's her pet, or whatever. Yeah. And it's very subtly played. Yeah, I, I think that uh, this is a Kong that, I, I agree, it's much more It's much more primal Kong. than Usually, you know, when you introduce Kong, he is the kind of primal, you know, king of the island, and then he's kind of humanized in a mm -hmm. weird way throughout the rest of the movie. This kind of keeps him in that role of just, like, he's the king of this island, he, he rules over it all, and, and that's pretty much where he, his portrayal throughout this film, there's not this softening of Kong, which no. is, you know, this, I think it's one of the first times we've seen that as far as like, he's just a, a primal animal yeah. and he's there to protect his turf. He's there to repel invaders and he doesn't really care too much about the humans unless they are trying to do damage to himself or to the island. Well, yeah. And that's, that's the other thing is that you a hundred percent understand Kong's point of view, right? Mm -hmm. You understand why he's doing what he's doing, yeah. even if he's, and there is a level of consciousness there and decision making which there should be you know he's um he's a he's a primate and primates certainly are as we know very intelligent right. um so and he's a really big one which makes me he's wonder about monkey. the size of his brain is too. that a monkey is that a monkey that's i love I that, that line toby cabell is that a monkey his only great moment in the movie actually is that a monkey the hu the only the, great he, human one moment? of the only good human moments yeah well we'll talk about that but i do think that that's the interesting thing is is that the character that you should care about the most, in my opinion, is this the character that you do care about the most, which is Kong, right? Yeah. Now, let's talk about the human imperfections. Yeah. One of the things that I really noticed is that it seems almost like some of the main characters are in different movies. Tom Hiddleston and Brie Larson are in one adventure movie. Yeah. Uh, Sam Jackson is in another revenge movie. Yep. Uh, John Goodman is in a crazy inventor movie. Yeah. And then John C. Riley, almost appropriately, is in a marooned man movie. A marooned on his, a crazy island movie. And his is the only one that actually makes sense. His is the only, uh, of and all of works. the humans, 
And I mean, I think this is largely, when you look at this cast, Brie Larson, Tom Hiddleston, Samuel L. Jackson, John Goodman, uh, Jason Mitchell. Yeah. Um, so many people that... Great talent. Uh, it's a deep cast, really deep cast, and it largely wasted. I yeah. mean, Sam Jackson is there doing his Sam Jackson thing. If you like if you like what Sam Jackson does, well, he does it in this movie. And it's Somebody asked me, like, how many times does Sam Jackson say mother effer? And it's, I said, well, he says it... PG-13, yeah. He doesn't say it, but he says it with his eyes a lot. There is a great Jurassic Park reference, though, that I'll let people discover that he makes in that movie, which I thought was great. But John C. Riley, I think, is the one that kept me on board with this movie. He comes in about halfway through-ish, and I think it's because it seemed like he made up his own dialogue, and I think that he just, through sheer will, was able to make that part funny and interesting, and, and that character's the only one that actually has really any depth behind it, any mm -hmm. detail about why he's there, what he cares about, everything else. They're, they're such sketches, they're such caricatures, and it is a shame because I think that as 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 perfect as they get Kong, it's not enough to carry the entire movie as to greatness. And mm -hmm. you needed something from that cast. And it's not their fault. They're doing their best. It's just that the script gives them almost nothing to do. They are they're they're sketches, they're their caricatures, you know, their their archetypes, and it never really goes below that surface. And they're picked off, you know, you start with I mean, there's like two dozen, it seems like two dozen characters to keep track of, and it's only just so that they can get picked off by the monsters one by one. I could track how, how long we were into the movie by how many characters we had left. When we got down to about seven, I was like, okay, we're close to the end. Yeah. Well, I mean, I I do think that it's interesting that the person that is acting the most insane, which is John C. Riley, is the one whose logical through line makes the most sense to me. Right. Right? Because there's some behaviors Particularly, there's some things that Tom Hiddleston and Brie Larson do that just don't make a ton of sense. They don't, and and even Sam Jackson's motivations. I mean, we're kind of They're told pretty... what his motivations are, but it's like, well, why would, why would anyone do that? Why would anyone make those decisions? It just seems beyond comprehension, even given what the movie's telling us about why he's doing what he's doing. They don't write that character with enough detail to sell it. Yeah, and the fact that the exposition is absolutely necessary, kind of tell in order to make sense of what he's doing, tells you enough right there. But I will say his character in particular, like, look, the original Godzilla Gojira mm -hmm. was making, we all know this famously, um, was making an analogy about the atomic bomb, and yeah. it did it really well. The nuclear age. Um, and this, uh, well, particularly. Uh, Hiroshima, right? So yeah. um, this, because it takes place at the tail end of Vietnam, yeah. is making a very uncomfortable analogy, I think, to the Vietnam War, where there are, mo particularly with Sam Jackson's character, where there are moments that you, what they're trying to play on is this idea of who is the enemy mm -hmm. and why are we doing this and are we creating enemies for no reason yeah. um, with our sort of warlike behavior. And that's okay. I think that's a fine thing to do, but I think you need to do it in a better movie because when you think of the, the true loss I just had moments of going in and out with it. There were moments that I thought, okay, I get what you're doing because you're playing off Godzilla, but then there were, you're not a good enough movie to do that. I mean, you gave it way more credit than I did because I didn't pick up on any of that. I just thought that they were kind of making up things as they went along haphazardly <laughs> and trying to justify what they were doing. It's like, I don't know, we got to get here or whatever. It's, <laughs> this is a really tough movie for me because, you know, I've been very hard on movies, you know, not being underwritten and, and, and characters not well sketched out. I've been very, very hard on them. And so it's really difficult to me because I think that the gods, the, sorry, the King Kong stuff is done so well. So well. And the human stuff is done so poorly yeah. that it's really difficult for me to kind of figure out which way I'm going to sway. For I think the inventiveness of the creatures, the fact that they are used effectively in the movie, that, that they do things that I haven't seen creatures like that in a movie in quite mm -hmm. some time. They're very inventive with what, the, what they're evolved to do and how they kill people. They're not always malicious. Sometimes it's just things of nature. And then, you know, that the, the final big Kong battle is a fantastic, much like Godzilla, yeah. was a fantastic battle. Uh, so oh, it's enough that for final me. With the, in it's, Godzilla? Yeah, it, the, the Godzilla thing with the atomic breath was great. This is kind of, I would put that on par with that. It's a great final fight. King Kong is Kong, King Kong, it's King Kong. It, it, the, the brutality of it is what they get right. And so it's just enough to earn a recommendation from me. 
uh, I, I would say matinee recommendation. I don't know if I would pay full price for this movie. It's if you like a creature feature kind of B movie, that's exactly what this is. It's two inches deep. Mm -hmm. it, you're there for the King Kong action, and yeah. there's not much else to offer. So it's just enough for me to say, you know, that you should go see it. But it, I'm not giving it a ringing endorsement. I will say that I am a big fan of the creature feature and giant monsters beating things. I happen to love these things, and so and I. I I wish so often in the most recent iterations of our creature features that they would pull back the amount of screen time we're giving to underdeveloped human stories and focus more on the monsters, which is so often what's really working about them. Um, and I feel no different in this film, which is that I will say that if you like those kinds of movies and that you're interested in King Kong, this is done, Kong has done well. Yeah. And so you will enjoy that. These are good monster fights. I, the first time we see him, is fantastic. Yeah. I was losing it during that sequence, and I wanted the rest of the movie to have that maintain that momentum, which it didn't. But you will enjoy that portion of this movie, but do expect nothing from the human storyline. No, and stay, you may be come pleased. for the action sequences <laughs> and just kind of sit through the rest. Yeah. And that's pretty much it. You know, like I say, it's 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 a close call, but I'm yeah. gonna I'm gonna recommend it, Ross. I'm gonna recommend it for for those sequences alone, and say that I hope that the next go round they focus more on what they're getting right yeah. um, and just simplify the human elements, which I think monster movies, you know, the humans are there to kind of lead us into the different monster battles yeah. and follow that model. Yeah. And, and PSA, we should tell people that there is an end credit scene yes. that you should sit through. However, I will say don't read the end credits because the end credits spoil what the end credit scene is going to be. Yes. So stay for the end credit scene. Don't read the end credits because yeah. it's going to spoil what you're about to see. Yeah, that's that's a, something that people should know going in. And we will also have a separate video going up this weekend about that end credit scene and what it does mean yeah. for the future of the MonsterVerse. Here we go again. Another shared universe. <laughs> Well, that's what Roth and I thought of Kong Skull Island. What did you think of the movie? Let us know down there in the comments. We always want to know what you think. And uh, be sure to click around here for more Screen Junkies new stuff. We'll always be here uh, reviewing the latest movies and bringing you news as it happens. Thanks for watching. I'm Dan Merle. See you next time.